Okay, we'll call the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors regular meeting Thursday, November 8th, 2012 at 18.03 hours. Director Fox, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? We have to. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let the record show that all the board members are present. Uh, first uh, business item is additions or deletions to the agenda. I made a suggestion about the potential of um, having a government representative to the grants, which was ratified by George. That be reflected in minutes. Oh, we voted. We voted. I'm sorry. Did we vote on it? No, but it was discussed. And yeah, this it was just recommended that we go. Maybe we were going to discuss it right tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah, should it be reflected or not? If not, I'm fine with the minutes as stand. We could. Alec, it's uh, your call. Uh, I think the proceed. I think that. we're. I, I think we're fine, and then we'll make sure we reflect because we have a document. Tonight. Very good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Well, I abstain. I wasn't at that meeting, so I can't oh. attest to the one way or the other. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the October 11th regular So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Um, we'll go out of order here a little bit due to time constraints of our attorney. We'll, so we'll go to, uh, without objection, the legal update next. All right. Well, first of all, I just, I'm really here just uh, to meet and greet um, uh, the board chief. Um, uh, I know some of the folks that were here when I last served here. Some of you may know that um, I served as counsel, well, my firm served as counsel for 25 years and ending in about 2002, 2003, somewhere in that time period. Um, and um, uh, during that time period, a lot of change took place. We used to be in the little building next door, upstairs, you know, a lot of things that um, uh, has changed. So. Uh, all for the better, as far as I can tell. So, um, uh, I really haven't uh, got much going on. I did, uh, I can give you an update. I'm working with uh, council regarding that waiver question that you all met in executive session about and uh, uh, whatnot. So, we are proceeding with that. I've uh, drawn up a waiver and um, uh, sent it to uh, Mike and um, uh, you know, for a quick review, um, you will have to approve it before it's done. So the reason I just sent the mic was, um, and, and I, I typically do that unless you want me to send everything to every director, I can do that, but generally I work with the president and the chief, 
and then when they see something that the whole board needs to do between meetings, they can let me know and I can send it out or whatever. So, um, you know, I've got to keep that caveat, and I'm sure Mr. Cole and, and other council here have mentioned this, that you guys cannot email back and forth with each other. Two of you can, but the whole board cannot be part of a reply-all type situation. So. Um, uh, but you, you know, if I send something to everybody, you can all reply each to me, but don't hit reply all and then send it back because that's quote a, a oh. meeting and we can't do that. Um, the chief and I can talk, chief and any of you can talk, uh, chief can talk to any two of you, but once you get more than two, it becomes the majority of the board and we can't do that. But anyhow, so um, we did look at uh, that waiver, sent it out. The, the hang up right now is we have determined a certain, and I believe you all were made privy to that, a certain number of emails uh, that were um, uh, looked at, reviewed by my partner and by the chief, and I believe by some or all of you, and it was passed, that those would be okay. There's some push to expand that waiver of the privilege, and um, I'm just trying to get you guys out of this. That's, you know, our, our uh, role in this whole thing is just to get going and get away from it and let whatever's going to happen, happen. It's just not really um, for us to have that issue. So that's my, my role at this point. And then uh, the only other thing I've done during the month is uh, Chief and I uh, talked briefly and I sent a uh, memo on uh, volunteer EMS people and, and the, how that might look and what it's got to shape at it. And it's, it, it's a gray area, um, but uh, you know, I think it can be done. But it's got to be. He and I, I think, have a pretty good understanding of what's got to what's got to be done. They've got to still be firefighters, even if they're assigned full time to that ambulance. They still have to be firefighters and have some firefighter training and that sort of thing. So I think he's got a pretty good handle on that. If um, you know, if it gets closer to reality and we got to go and look at it and you know get specific on what can and cannot be considered firefighter training, et cetera, et cetera. Like that. But right now, that's So those are the only two things, and um, um, delighted to be back, and, um, uh, it, uh, uh, you know, I just got the word that it's nice and quiet here, and there is no controversy at Elk Creek, and I'm, I just think that's healthy. We're all, we're all smiling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and um, uh, Mr. Emming was on, um, actually, were you on when I was actually on, or you, you, you and I started about the same time, back in the late 70s? And um, so I've, I've known Dan a long time, and uh, I, there are a few other uh, gray hairs that uh, I'm around here that I probably do know and, and whatnot. So, uh, but unless someone has questions for me, and I don't think this is going to be a problem uh, normally, because I can... Um, choose which district I need to go to, but on the second Tuesday, the Willowis Metropolitan District, which is just down the street here, meets at 6.30. So, um, uh, on days that there is controversy, not that we've ever seen it here, but in case there ever would be any controversy, um, you know, I would um, probably just come here and my partner would go to uh, uh, Willowis, but in, something like that. We can work that out. He used to live in Willowis and, and has served on that board and is comfortable with that. So, and, and, you know, Raleigh can be um, uh, called upon to show up and, and, and cover like she did last month when I was out riding my bicycle in Nova Scotia. So, and so that's, uh, um, you know, kind of how we will serve you all um, in this interim time period or for however long <coughs> you want. So that's, that's kind of how we're going to do it. Questions for me or about the firm or anything? I know you met Raleigh last time. You might have asked questions of her. But. What do you consider yourself in this context a real specialist? You mean as a lawyer? Yep. Um, I've done special district work since 1978. Elk Creek was my first client. And like I said, I did them for 25 years. I've done a lot of fire districts. I was a, I was a volunteer here. And so I know a little bit about that. I wasn't on for real long, and it's been a long time. I think Chief would probably not consider me a real firefighter anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, um, so I do know special district law well. Um, the other thing I know uh, reasonably well is um, uh, real estate and, and uh, um, development law. 
so I, I do those kinds of things. I don't do, I mean, I, I do litigation when it uh, erupts out of like special districts or out of Rose Day or something like that, but I'm not, you know, we don't do any personal injury. I don't do any criminal law. I don't do any divorces. I, you know, I, it's a civil practice um, that um, um, specializes uh, really in um, small businesses, um, uh, real estate, and special districts. That's what I, I do. And then I'm also a part-time judge, so you know that that takes a chunk of my time as well. So, um, and uh, yeah, so between all those things, it kind of keeps me um, pretty busy. Yeah. Uh, my wife's retired, and she wonders why I have to stay so busy. Hmm. You want to answer any questions? Good. Good. All right. Well, um, oh, I'll leave with the chief here just so. Cards and you guys go out, walk down the road as I say goodbye and hand out a couple cards. But the, uh, uh, if you need me, um, probably email is the best way. Otherwise, as I said, go through your president or through the chief, uh, either one of whom can get a hold of me pretty much any time. Um, I think they both already have my cell phone. If not, I'd be glad to give it to whomever needs it. Uh, I carry it with me all the time. I can't always pick it up, as any of us can, but I'm more than willing. Uh, take calls on that or get office calls as well. So, and, and, but email, I think we've all become, you know, almost addicts of that. It's always on in the background on the computer, and so I see them as they come in. So, anything else? All right. Well, I'm gonna get out of here. Good to see you, sir. Yep. Nice to meet you. Maybe. Freshly made, huh? Yeah, I took a <laughs> minute on my <laughs> way over here. Have my pocket. You think that's good? good? It's good to see we'll you. We'll be in touch. All right. Tim, there are more budgets on a copier if you want to grab one. There you go. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm not sure. There we go. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Awesome. And we'll see you later. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah, oh, everybody's fine. Yeah. All right, next uh, item of business will be uh, financial matters and the treasury. Yeah, there's living in Australia. Uh, you have before you the uh, financial report for October. Note that the uh, detail is uh, we still don't have the uh, reconciliation from Bank of the West for the operating account, but the balance is there for you to see, and of course, we have our detail. Uh, I therefore would like to make uh, a motion to approve the uh, total expenses for the month of $92,467. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Curious. Thank you. Uh, the other thing we have discussed uh, in the past, and I've discussed with a number of board members, the need to uh, take a look at our reserves and make sure that we have something set aside for real emergencies. Um, I think we talked about, uh, also with the chief, the idea that we also need a certain amount of money to uh, float us over the first three months of the year because we don't get tax revenues until what's March or April. It starts uh, picking up in March. And March. Okay. So we need a certain amount of cash to cover us during that period of time. Uh, and the chief, I think, will go over that when he does his budget presentation. But uh, in terms of a, a permanent reserve, in addition to the amount that we're required to uh, hold on to because of the Tabor Law, uh, I'd like to move that we establish $100,000 as the permanent reserve uh, for the Elk Fire Protection District, uh, only to be used uh, in an emergency when the board uh, deems it necessary. Okay, is there a second on that? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, that's all I have. Okay, any questions? Valley? I just have one quick question. Um, how would we fund the reserve? Well, well, we have a reserve now. We have a fund balance. It's just right. a matter of segregating $100,000 of that. Okay. We don't have a special bank account. We just, counting-wise, segregate $100,000 and designate that as our permanent reserve. Got it. And then else?
That'll take us to the next item. We'll suspend uh, regular business and open up a public hearing for discussion on the 2013 budget. Do you present that first? Uh, yes, if you'd like. Okay, we um, uh, should have a copy of the uh, the uh, current draft narrative of budget. Um, and um, this does have a number of changes uh, from the first draft that was presented uh, last month. Uh, and uh, it's my, my expectation that we will uh, go ahead and um, have the public hearing on the budget this evening. Uh, but uh, final approval will wait until the December meeting uh, when we will have the uh, final levy figures and we'll have the resolutions prepared for uh, setting the, uh, the levy for, for the county. Uh, to give you, a, you know, kind of a little bit of a background, um, you know, uh, the over the past uh, several years, the district has uh, gone from a high of uh, 832,000 um, in in uh, the bank down to currently about uh, 528,000. We're estimating for the end of this particular year. Uh, basically, the, the district has been operating at a deficit. Uh, over the last two years, and essentially has spent down three hundred thousand dollars out of out of reserves. Uh, we can't continue to do that because uh, to do so would place us down uh, below the amount that would be required to uh, basically, you know, have that cash flow, you know, at the beginning of the year. Uh, we need to maintain twenty percent of our budget uh, in the bank in order to pay our bills for the first three months of the of the year. And uh, you know that uh, so that kind of sets what our, our minimum you know uh, allowable amount is. So looking at that, our, our beginning balance uh, is estimated again to be about five hundred twenty-eight thousand. Uh, up and of that, two hundred ninety-three thousand was uh, the amount that uh, is calculated as required for you know, the set aside for cash flow. Uh, state law requires that we set aside 3% for the Tabor funds, which comes to about $42,890. And then uh, the 100000 that we had discussed at the work session, holding that out, is about uh, $67,000 in unallocated funds uh, going into next year. Um, I have uh, drawn this budget up not to draw down that last $67,000. Uh, largely because uh, that, you know, the district does not have a capital fund of any type. Uh, basically, uh, all capital purchases have been made uh, by, you know, ca on a cash basis when needed. Uh, and unfortunately, as we we'll see when we get later on into this budget, uh, we're very, very far behind in our capital uh, capital purchase needs, and we basically don't have anything set aside. Uh, to um, take care of that. So, uh, looking at this budget, you know, we try to uh, I try to prioritize uh, the services in that we try to maintain the existing level of service to the public to the degree possible. However, um, you know, we are going to see some actual cuts in service that the public will see uh, this year with this budget. Uh, we really don't have any. Any choice in that, um, you know, at this point, we, we don't have the money to continue all the services we have been providing. Um, so over the last two years, the the department ran a, but, a deficit of 143,000 in uh, 2011, and 123,000 approximately this year. Uh, the um, again, you know, what I've attempted to do is rather than to continue. To uh, you know, run a, a deficit. Our original projections, based on the increased uh, costs and coupled with decreased revenues, was that the the you know deficit this year to maintain everything that we were doing would have run $160,000. And again, that would have you know basically dropped us $100,000 below our our uh, reserve level. So starting with reserves, uh, you'll see that uh, the um, basically, we re have, have apparently reached uh, the bottom for uh, you know property taxes, and it, it's leveled out. Um, essentially, 
are going to have uh, the same amount of property tax as we did last year. Uh, however, uh, the, the thing that's really been uh, impacting us uh, the most is the decrease in ambulance revenues. Uh, we've seen that drop off over the last uh, couple of years for two reasons. Uh, one, we're transporting fewer people, uh, even though we're going on the same number of calls or, or nearly the same number, but many more people are opting to not, you know, take an ambulance ride and pay for the service and instead uh, go ahead and, you know, find alternate ways okay. of uh, getting to, to the hospital or, you know, opting in some cases not to seek further care. The second part of that is that we've seen that, uh, you know, Medicare um, write-offs, which we don't have any control over, has increased from 17% in 2007 to 30% of all of our ambulance billings uh, last year. And essentially what's happening there is two things. One, we're you know, the people that we are transporting are, in more cases, uh, Medicare or Medicaid patients, uh, you know, which is a result of an aging population. And Secondly, Medicare has uh, basically gotten a little bit tighter, and they will continue to be tighter on what they will uh, pay for. Essentially, they have been reducing uh, reimbursements for various uh, costs, and uh, you know, as a result, we're seeing less money coming in from that. At the same time, uh, you know, bad debts from ambulance bills have risen from 13% of our, our total gross to 20%. Uh, so we're, we're seeing that as a large write-off, and those are essentially people that have no health insurance and, uh, you know, have no way to pay. They either are set to collections and never pay, or in some cases, they'll come to us with a request for financial write-off. And, you know, in cases where we've got people that are unemployed and have no income, you know, there's, there's little else we could do other than write it off. We're not, we're not going to see the money at any time. Um, so what we've seen there is that, uh, you know, we've um, seen a decline of uh, 40 to 44 percent over the past five years in our total ambulance billing. And that has been one of the biggest factors in why our, you know, why we have been running a deficit over the last two years. Uh, one thing that we did see in, this year in revenues that uh, was a significant, impact, you know, positive impact for us was reimbursement for wildland responses. Uh, that went from uh, basically, I believe two years ago, we had a net uh, or a gross of, of about $9,000. Uh, this year we had a gross of over $200,000. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that really actually... Uh, reduce the, uh, the, the net deficit from that $123,000 dramatically. Uh, basically, it, it helped subsidize all the rest of the things that we're doing. Uh, going into next year, though, um, you know, I don't think that it would be prudent to try to budget based on a one-year, uh, you know, I mean, it was a particularly busy fire season, and the request for assistance basically came all season long. Uh, we can't expect that we're going to see that kind of um, that kind of demand to for us to assist other agencies every year. So we've tried to, you know, we're anticipating that we are going to try to, as much as possible, um, you know, continue to uh, provide assistance and utilize the reimbursement from that to help offset some of our other uh, our other costs. But we have to set it that at a more reasonable level than, you know, than the 200,000 that we saw this year. Uh, another area that we've seen a dramatic fall has been in uh, fire inspections and building plan reviews. Um, back in uh, 2006, uh, the department took in $50,000 in, uh, in uh, fire permit and, and construction uh, plan review uh, fees, largely because we were at a time of a lot of commercial activity. Uh, that has fallen to uh, approximately 9,200 this year. Uh, for next year, we're budgeting only about $8,000 uh, in that. So we've seen, you know, uh, basically, that's fallen uh, by well, about 42,000 out of $50,000 over over that uh, six-year period. 
the rest of the um, revenues that we have include the cellular tower uh, release, um, the participation by the state that matches our pension fund, and some very minor revenues accounting to about $2,500 on average. Uh, so that gives us a, a net projected revenue um, this year of about 100 or 1.429 uh, million, uh, down from about 1.457 in 2011, and from 1.61 or 621 in uh, um, 2011. So we're seeing a pretty dramatic uh, decrease in the available funds. Uh, that we have to, to provide service. Okay, moving on to expenditures. Um, the, the budget this year has been reorganized in a manner that uh, would allow us to basically be able to um, you know, review each of the different uh, program areas a little bit more easily uh, than it has been in the past. So it's uh, broken out starting with the governance budget, which includes um, basically the cost for the board of directors and for any um, you know governance costs that uh, the, the district might encounter. Uh, this this budget is uh, has been uh, included. I have included uh, forty six thousand dollars for uh, potential election uh, costs, uh, and that would include basically that would be the cost of. Uh, the, if the board were to go out for a uh, mill increase uh, next November, that's the you know, kind of a rough estimate at this point of what it would cost to make that request. Of. Unfortunately, uh, while Tabor, um, you know, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights uh, did make some you know some uh, parts of government more transparent, it also unfortunately makes this particular part of government much more expensive because it requires that we prepare pamphlets and mail those uh, to all of the voters and, uh, and as well as conducting the actual election itself. So that if the, the board does get elect to do that and the, and the money is budgeted in here, uh, that will be a fairly significant cost. Um, moving on to the next section, and please any, you know, stop me if you have any questions on any of this. Uh, the administration budget uh, includes uh, the salary and benefits for two positions, and again, previously there were 2.5 positions in administration. Uh, one of those positions became vacant uh, early in this year, and I elected not to fill it uh, at that time. Uh, so we've, we've been down a half a position uh, for the majority of this year already. Um, to uh, basically take care of the uh, workload in that, uh, we've outsource the ambulance billing and uh, our payroll uh, functions to try to reduce that, that uh, workload. Um, you will note in looking at that that uh, in the past the uh, expenses for wages and benefits were all lumped into one line item for the entire department. They're broken out now into each of these different areas so that uh, uh, it's more, it's easier to see uh, what our different uh, services are costing us. Um, this year we did have a pretty, pretty uh, large investment into our uh, replacing the computer system uh, when it, you know, it failed as you're, as you're aware. Uh, and uh, we're just actually, just in the last couple of days, finally getting the, the replacement system up and working. Uh, so that was a big expense for this year that uh, will be considerably less for next year. Um, and I also have reduced uh, the budget for legal expenses in the hope that uh, we will not be spending, you know, uh, we were up to about $56,000 in 2011 because of the ongoing problems uh, with, you know, previous, previous uh, legal issues that should be reason, uh, resolved at this time. The next, go ahead. Uh, under, this is fairly minor, but under telephone, I note that you're not projecting a decrease. Weren't you thinking that we'd save money with the new VOIP? Uh, what that did for us is essentially <clears throat> it, uh, it let us, you know, yeah, it, it's saving a little bit on the, um, 
on the, the station telephones, but not, not a lot. Uh, however, it's a little bit offset in that we did add um, one additional cellular phone line as well. Uh, so it, uh, it's, I'm going to guess at this point it's going to be about the same okay. for the next year. Okay. Um, emergency services is the next section, and this is basically covers all of the uh, shared costs for all of the different types of responses that we do. So this would include uh, fire, EMS, rescue. Uh, and so all of the wages and volunteer costs are included in this. Um, we have seen a slight decrease in the, uh, the full-time wages. Uh, we have the same number of personnel. And, um, but uh, because of uh, two tur turnover of two staff, we had a, a reduction in the cost there. Uh, that was offset by uh, promotion of, uh, of our uh, several, uh, three of our uh, firefighters to lieutenant, uh, which added a little bit uh, you know, back into that. But overall, uh, that, uh, that is a lower rate than, um, or a lower amount than we've been paying in the past several years. Unfortunately, uh, you know, wages for all of the staff here have been frozen for several years. And they are project. They are going to be frozen going into next year as well. Um, we do have a little bit of a savings in uh, in healthcare costs. Even though uh, the health insurance rates are going up, we did find a less expensive plan. Uh, so we're moving to that, and we're seeing a very um, uh, a relatively minor savings from that. Fortunately, this this plan will provide essentially the same level of uh, benefits to the employees, but at a slightly lower cost. So uh, the, the savings isn't much there, but uh, it's better than the projected 10% increase that we were going to see with the continuing with the other plan. Um, we've reduced uh, our set aside for part-time wages, just to, you know, our anticipation is that we're going to be uh, probably trying a lot harder not to utilize uh, those part-time personnel because of the cost when we, uh, when we have uh, someone out on leave. Um, we've also had the, the volunteer pension plan. We've been investing uh, $59,000 into that plan each year. Our last audit indicated that we were uh, close to $200,000 overfunded into the plan. Um, we, I have continued to uh, put uh, $50,667 into that plan uh, because that's the amount that's required to maintain the, the state matching funds. So that $50,667 is actually $26,667 from, from the district and $24,000 from the state of Colorado. Okay. The $8,300 that was set into that has been uh, placed into an incentive uh, plan for the volunteers. I think, you know, looking ahead, knowing that, uh, you know, our, our budget is going to continue to be, it's going to be difficult to maintain services on our, on our existing budget. We need to try to focus as much as we can on increasing our volunteer participation and increasing uh, recruitment there, so that's one area of the budget where uh, I tried not to uh, not to take away, and in fact, to add in a couple of places our, our cost for recruiting and training new volunteers. Okay, uh, moving on to fire one operations. Question. One Go ahead. question: I noticed that we have a line item for accrued PTO. Is that because of the audit requirement that we? Basically, there's there's two issues for that. One is that we have to budget that uh, we may potentially pay it out, and uh, and that was actually lumped in with the rest of the wages in the past. Oh, okay. And secondly, we do have within our policy uh, allowance for uh, the employees to um, cash out their PTO when they reach their you know if they reach their maximum PTO accumulation. So if they don't take their vacation. They get paid for it at straight time. Oh, okay. It's actually less expensive for us to do that because we don't have to pay somebody else uh, overtime to work right. the days that they're they're not available. 
Okay, uh, fire operations uh, basically cover structure and vehicle operations and, and uh, rescue operations. Uh, the big thing that, that uh, we've got here is that um, for many years the department has not been purchasing uh, you know, firefighter structural protective clothing. And uh, we have reached the point now where we, you know, the last uh, rookie class went down to do their burn training and, and some of them got burned because the, the gear's got holes in it. Um, it's, you know, 10 years old. It's basically not, not serviceable anymore. We have to replace that. And unfortunately, the cost of outfitting a firefighter these days is, uh, um, you know, just the turnout gear is now uh, running somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,500 a set. Uh, so we budgeted basically to outfit um, uh, basically nine volunteers uh, or nine firefighters uh, each year, you know, in 2012 and 2013. And uh, that's still not going to put us caught up on, on that uh, you know, PPE requirement. Uh, and unfortunately, that's the, the, um, the biggest limiting factor for us right now on taking new volunteers on. We have 40 volunteer applicants. <coughs> Uh, but to outfit all of those uh, 40 applicants with uh, gear uh, would run us uh, between 75 and 100 thousand um, dollars, and we don't, we just don't have the funding to do that. So we're going to take on a much smaller group, um, and uh, hopefully, you know, be able to do the same, and, you know, and basically <coughs> just keep uh, recruiting at that rate in the future if, if all goes well. Okay, wildland operations um, really has very little change from this year. Uh, did set aside uh, su a miscellaneous supply, so uh, wildland tools were previously taken out of uh, out of the, the general you know uh, fire budget, uh, but uh, we separated that out for this year just to keep track of of our costs there. But a relatively small part of the budget, uh, considering the the overall risk to the community. Uh, EMS, uh, you'll see we have, um, you know, the, the budget jumps up quite a bit this year, largely because of the $18,500 that's allocated for fuel. Again, in the past, all the fuel was basically lumped into one. Uh, we're going to work, you know, basically break out uh, the fuel costs by uh, different um, areas so that we can see. Uh, you know, probably our largest single expense in terms of fuel each year is, you know, ambulance transports to and from the hospital, which, uh, you know, run quite a bit of uh, that fuel requirement. Um, EMS supplies uh, not are not really much of a change there, um, although I think that we may see some impact on that. We've been seeing uh, particularly uh, drug costs have been going up at a, at a pretty phenomenal rate. Um, there's been drug shortages on a regular basis. We keep having to switch the drugs that we use uh, because of uh, inability to get drugs anymore. Um, and uh, as a result, we're seeing increases in that as well. Uh, that's really a large reason for the increase from uh, 2011, where it was about $15,000, to this year, where we're projecting a, co a cost to us of about $23,000. Um, so we're anticipating that uh, that's not going to go down uh, moving into the future. The software costs are uh, were again you know we included in a previous line item uh, in the past, and that uh, includes the cost for uh, maintaining our uh, online software for doing uh, patient reports to the hospital. Okay, fire prevention is the probably the biggest impact on the, on the district this year. Again, um, you know, what we're looking at in order to balance this budget, we had to cut um, about $160,000. And that led to some very difficult choices here. Um, you know, essentially we could not um, reach that level of, uh, of balancing the budget with and maintain our current staffing levels. Uh, so this budget eliminates the fire marshal's position and uh, the responsibility, you know, basically we would contract to the Evergreen Fire Department to uh, conduct our plan reviews and to do the mandated uh, inspections and we would drop um, 
drop quite a bit of our other fire prevention activities. Uh, essentially, you know, the, when we look at it, uh, you know, we can do what we're legally required to do there uh, through that contractual agreement, and um, you know, essentially eliminate close to eighty thousand dollars out of our budget by doing it. So that uh, represents, unfortunately, um, you know, where most of that savings is coming from uh, going into, into next year. Uh, the budget does include um, basically uh, the um, accumulated leave for for our uh, fire marshal and uh, and one last month uh, keeping the, the person on for you know through January to ensure the transition over to the uh, you know outsourcing that and then um, we're estimating about fifteen thousand dollars to uh, contract the, those plan reviews and services. Uh, we do, you know, we do, do expect that this would be an impact to the public in a number of ways. Um, it's going to be more time consuming uh, for them to get permits. Um, they're going to have to get them from Evergreen uh, rather than being able to get them here locally. Um, you know, where we have a potential impact if we drop uh, inspections entirely and we will see fire insurance rates rise for everybody in the community. But again, uh, you know, we don't have much else in the budget that we could make the kind of cuts that are required to, to get this budget uh, down to uh, balancing. The training uh, section, uh, you'll see that, uh, again, we've moved uh, the wages and benefits out of the uh, general wage and benefit line and specifically put the assistant chief into uh, into this section, so it looks like a dramatic increase, but uh, it's actually just again sh moving that uh, those costs over from another part of the budget. And again, uh, there's no increase in the uh, wages uh, and a very slight decrease in the benefits uh, for that position as well. Um, several areas of the training have been have been cut. Uh, we'd anticipate. Uh, being a lot more uh, selective about what we would allow per, you know, personnel to do in terms of classes outside of the district. The only area that, we're, uh, that I'm proposing that we increase would be the Rookie Academy. And again, that's in anticipation of trying to take more volunteers on, uh, you know, to be able to hopefully maintain our, our level of service without seeing it drop too much further as we, as we move ahead. Maintenance, uh, again, includes the cost for uh, wages and, and benefits for maintenance personnel. Um, several of the line items in there have been cut or are being maintained at, um, you know, the, basically the, the level that, uh, you know, basically a, a fairly minimal level for the apparatus and, um, Probably below what we would like to see for repair on the on the facilities, um, which is in the next section. Um, you know, we're we're looking at an anticipated cost uh, for you know basically for sending our fire apparatus out for major repairs of about twenty seven thousand dollars this year. We're only budgeting twelve thousand dollars going into next year. Um, the uh, there are, um, there's a good chance that we'll see that uh, run up higher than our original budget as it did this year uh, because we are at the point where we've got a lot of apparatus that are uh, getting pretty old and uh, you know, that, that does increase the, the maintenance cost on those. We have eliminated um, both this year and next year uh, funding for repairing uh, hydrants or cisterns, um, which was a relatively small part of the budget. Okay, moving on to facilities. Um, again, uh, some pretty significant cuts in here. Uh, we don't have a lot of control over the utility costs, uh, but um, you know, we've cut uh, the building maintenance uh, down uh, from 18,000 two years ago to about 10,000 this year. Uh, we're really just deferring very much needed maintenance at this point 
Uh, we've got you know broken windows in the fire stations. Uh, we've got wiring problems. Uh, we really even just basic needs um, you know are not going to be met uh, because we really can't afford to to make those uh, significant in in, in uh, increases in, in the um, uh, you know remodeling, replacing uh, windows or, or things along that line. So. So that's not included uh, going into uh, 2013. Capital projects, um, you know, this year we had uh, the purchase of the one replacement um, ambulance. Uh, we actually would be scheduled to replace another ambulance next year, which we are not going to do. Uh, we also this year did have the, the uh, UTV that was partially funded um, by grants. We're basically including no capital investment in fire or EMS or facilities for next year and just making the payments on the existing uh, leases for um, tender 461 and 432. Unfortunately, we have, you'll see that, uh, you know, two of our, one of our engines actually would be due for, would have been due for replacement this year. It's fortunately in very good condition and, and uh, can be deferred. Uh, engine 433 is over <coughs> five years at this point. It's in very, you know, relatively poor condition. Uh, the two tenders are overdue by six years, um, and uh, they're in fairly poor condition. Um, and then we've got three, uh, three staff cars, of which two are overdue, but it's but serviceable. And uh, the um, fire marshal's car actually is, uh, it has to be just. Uh, scrapped at this point. Um, you know, we really don't want to be sinking any more money into a 200,000 mile uh, vehicle. So um, that's one additional savings that we have with elimination of the fire marshal's position is eliminating a uh, replacement vehicle there, which would have been another uh, twenty to forty thousand dollars, depending on the, you know, what, what per was purchased. Okay. The next section, uh, the Wildland Fire Fund. Uh, in the past, the you know the these uh, revenues and expenditures for uh, wildland fires outside the district were uh, basically just two line items within the budget. And I'm sure you all recognize that we had a you know it was fairly difficult for us to really tell what was going on with that when <coughs> wages that were being reimbursed by the Forest Service were included in the in the wage section of our budget. So we've broken this all out for 2013 so that when we send personnel outside the district, um, you know, the wages, uh, the backfill costs when we hire a replacement employee, any of that uh, will be tracked separately and will, you know, basically allow us to see much more easily, uh, you know, how that, that program is doing. So essentially we're treating this this part of the budget as, a, as an enterprise fund uh, because it is the only part of the budget, again, where we actually, uh, you know, receive back more uh, in reimbursement than, than we spend in, in hard costs uh, to uh, provide that assistance outside the department. Okay, so the last part of this, uh, the net, the net uh, impact on the budget. Again, um, you know, we ran uh, we ran a deficit in um, the past two years. This uh, this budget, as is presented, uh, does not run a deficit. It uh, basically balances for this year, largely again because we don't have the option of running a bet deficit any longer. We would run out of cash uh, sometime around you know February or March, um, or get very very perilously low. Uh, if we did run up a $160,000 deficit again. Um, so what we're anticipating with this is that we would uh, essentially maintain uh, that those revenue or that uh, reserve that's currently sitting at approximately $500,000 uh, you know, going into next year, which uh, you know, basically leaves us sitting at about a level position uh, at the end of 2013. If we don't have any major uh, vehicle failures or other things that would you know, cut into that uh, that uh, amount, and again, 
the cushion here um, is looking at about you know fifty thousand, fifty nine thousand uh, dollars, you know, cushion above the, the <coughs> hundred thousand that you've asked to have set aside and the, and the required uh, reserves to operate. You assuming that the fifty nine thousand <coughs> would go into a vehicle replacement fund or a facilities both vehicles and is it any capital expenses basically. Yes, I, I do, except that what I'd like to point out is that this is not moving 59000 into that fund. This is the, the total amount that's still left over. I see. So it's like we have a, you know, $59,000 to buy the next fire engine, not that we have $59,000 this year to buy the fire engine. I understand. Unfortunately, the fire engines run about 500000 so it's not going to get us very far. But would you plan in the future to establish a fund that could be incremented? I think, I think that's going to have to happen. I mean, we're, where, where we're going to be with this is that uh, we either have to just start uh, reducing the older vehicles in the fund <coughs> and potentially closing <coughs> the station on Conifer Mountain or something like that, or we're going to have to figure out how to start investing into replacement uh, apparatus for that. Um, you know, even if we were putting $100,000 a year aside for that, uh, we would be five years out from being able to buy a replacement fire engine. Um, you know, that, that's not going to happen on our existing uh, revenue and expenditure levels. Any other questions from the board? No, but I'd like to uh, commend the chief on doing an excellent job and a and it was a very difficult uh, decisions to make. Thank you. Um, any comments from the public? Okay. We'll close the 2013 budget discussion hearing and reopen the regular board meeting. Uh, first item of business there will be to schedule the 2012 budget amendment and have that notice posted. The date that we can do that. It has to be after December 10th. Our regular board meeting is December 13th. That's where we'll have the 2012 budget. And final discussion on this, or adoption. That's correct. Be, you know, one last chance to make uh, make changes to that and adoption of the, of the budget at the next uh, meeting. Okay. That's December 13th. Okay, do you have anything else on budget? Uh, then it's your regular report. Okay. Um, I actually think I sent a sent an email out earlier, but I didn't get that included in the packets. Uh, there's just a few things. Uh, as you probably have all seen, the personnel policy manual is out for review right now, and uh, we've got a number of people uh, taking a look at that. We'd like to move to adopt the replacement uh, manual uh, for the first of the, you know, January. So my hope is that. We have uh, a relatively final draft available for the December meeting uh, for review. Uh, we have uh, finally, as I, as I mentioned, uh, the computers, the new computer system is up and running as of the last couple of days. Uh, the, the third company that we hired to work on it this year uh, finally was, seemed to be the right company and uh, got, the, got the project done and uh, has been really uh, very easy work with on that. Um, the mapping project is still <coughs> continuing. Uh, we are going to have to put a little bit of effort into it on our end in that we have found that uh, many of the buildings on the Park County side of the, of the district um, uh, are lack addresses or they have addresses posted on the road but the county doesn't uh, have record of them. Imagine that. Uh, so we're going to have to actually go and drive around all the homes and, and uh, get the addresses recorded and provide that information to Park County to get those maps accurate on that side. Uh, and then we've got a few other projects such as mapping all the, the cisterns and fire hydrants in the district and getting those on the maps. Uh, but we're making good progress with that project as well. And then the last thing is that we did uh, go ahead and purchase that used uh, brush truck uh, that, um, the, that was an ex uh, Forest Service truck. Uh, 
relatively low cost at uh, $43,750. Uh, and we anticipate that um, you know, by using that to uh, you know, operate as our out of district rig for next year, uh, we won't be pulling a, a, an engine out of one of the stations. We'll be able to maintain our existing level of service. And uh, we anticipate, you know, as we saw, we, we uh, netted you know, about $100,000 this year. Uh, so uh, the ability to reinvest that into something that will uh, benefit the district in terms of better, better um, you know, wildfire protection while it's here and, uh, you know, having a, having a full complement of brush trucks when it's out of the district uh, will be, uh, I think, a big benefit for the district. And this, is, this, this was in replace. This was in, instead of those two right, and vehicles the, out in California. Right, which, right, which ended up cost spend you know costing a lot more than, yeah. than we were uh, ready to pay for them. So this is a this truck's um, a little more primitive, I'd call it. Uh, it's uh, you know it's not uh, kind of the the interface type rig that uh, the California ones were, but it'll be very serviceable for what we're looking at doing with this. Um, it uh, you know basically a crew cab flatbed with uh, you know a table <coughs> and boxes on the back of it. So you know it looks it looks pretty primitive, but it does the job. And it's at a at a very reasonable cost. Okay. Chief. I'm good. Okay, are there any citizens' issues tonight? Okay, honor new business, uh, Director Wisniewski, it's all yours. Yeah. Well, what's happened with me since moving to beautiful Colorado, I've been uh, working for several years on uh, national health care policy, which I'm still continuing on Capitol Hill, and they just won't leave me go. But uh, <laughs> given that, I was, uh, last, last uh, month, I attended by phone, I am familiar with several excellent lobbyists, healthcare lobbyists, and lobbyists of other varieties. Um, I approached the board about the potential of looking for grants because if you look at the budget, we have zero project, uh, projected grants for 2013. Uh, I first met Beth Clay approximately um, 15 to 18 years ago when she was one of the chief staffers in the House Reform Committee and she was conducting hearings. Since that time, she's been, uh, shortly after that, she became uh, a lobbyist. She does government relations. Uh, she concentrates in the healthcare arena, but uh, is very diversified. I asked her a question in uh, regard to two facets. One is my incredible concern, especially as a physician, as a citizen of Conifer. Uh, we're providing what I feel is excellent um, ambulance services. Our reimbursement rate for such services has dropped dramatically, uh, which has negatively impacted our budget to a great degree. And um, as the chief told you, we even have people, unfortunately, some of the trainees having birds because of inadequate equipment at this point. I approached Beth on two regards. One, could we find federal grants for capital equipment, firefighting equipment, and are there any potential grants that we could find to make up for the, the lack of reimbursement for excellent services we're providing um, to the citizens of Conifer for emergency transport and paramedic services? She indicated <clears throat> that she felt that there were several avenues she could be helpful and therefore.